Okay, so you might have heard of the Raspberry Pi, a small credit card sized computer developed right here in the United Kingdom. The Raspberry Pi program was originally designed to teach programming in schools, and I've managed to get my hands on one. As you can see right here, this is my Raspberry Pi 4. It's pretty insane to believe that this is a computer. I managed to get it with four gigabytes of RAM because eight gigabyte is just impossible to get hold of. So what do I do when I get a new piece of technology like this? I try to play Minecraft on it. I try and install Java Edition, do some PVP and seeing how well it runs on such a tiny computer. If you're new around here, make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you're new. And yeah, without further ado, let's get into the unboxing. All right, guys, let's go ahead and unbox our Raspberry Pi. So as you can see, I've got a little desk cam going on here. So yeah, let's go ahead and unbox this thing. So it's coming a pretty plain cardboard box here. So let's just open that up. So yeah, here's the Raspberry Pi itself in its little box here. As you can see, I've got the four gigabyte of RAM version. I was gonna get the eight gigabyte version, but it's just out of stock everywhere and really hard to get hold of. So yeah, I'm pretty lucky that I've even got one to be honest, so yeah. And since I got it as part of a kit, as you can see, we've got some other stuff in the box. So we've got an official USB-C power supply from Raspberry Pi. I don't know why I got this. I mean, I've got loads of USB-C power supplies everywhere. And uh, yeah, it's good that that's come included. We've also got a case as well for our Raspberry Pi as well. It's just a simple black and gray one. If I just show you here. As you can see, we've got the Raspberry Pi logo on it, as you can see there. And yeah, it's a pretty basic case, really. It's got cutouts for all our ports and that kind of thing. And yeah, it's pretty easy just to pull apart and just clip your Raspberry Pi in and you're good to go. Looking back, I kind of wish I got a clear case. It would have been nice to be able to see inside the case and see it all working away. But yeah, I guess this is a pretty basic case and I guess it will do the job. I've also got a cable included as well. This is a micro HDMI to regular HDMI cable. And I need this in order to hook it up to my my monitor and my capture card so I can record the rest of this video. If I just ordered the Raspberry Pi on its own, I'd have to order one of these separately. So it's good that it's come with it as part of the set. So yeah, that's gonna be very useful. And speaking of useful, we've also got the Raspberry Pi SD card, as you can see here. So this is a pre-formatted Raspberry Pi OS SD card. So you basically just put this in your Raspberry Pi and you're good to go. So it means that I don't have to make any SD cards or do any kind of formatting or anything like that. It's all ready to go here. So I believe this is actually a adapter. So yeah, we've got this really tiny SanDisk micro SD card here. I'm thinking we're probably gonna have to put the micro SD card in there so I don't think a regular size SD card will go in there but yeah it's good that that's come included and saves me a lot of hassle which means I can literally just plug this all in put in the SD card get it all fired up and we'll be good to go right so we can chuck this box away now and for the main event here is the Raspberry Pi. I'm pretty surprised at how small it is, honestly. So as you can see, we've got our IO here. We've got our USB ports, USB 3, USB 2, Gigabyte Ethernet, I believe. We've got an audio jack, two micro HDMI ports, and a Type-C for our power. It's pretty insane. This thing can run up to two 8K monitors just off these micro HDMI ports. I can't test that, unfortunately. But yeah, that's really good bandwidth for such a small computer. I mean, look at it. Look, it's just tiny. But yeah, let's get this all hooked up to my second monitor, plug in my capture cards, and let's see what gaming is like on a Raspberry Pi. All right, guys, so I've got it all hooked up here. So I've connected up the micro HDMI. I've plugged in the SD card. It's really difficult to work out where the SD card went, but I flipped it over and the answer was literally right there. And I've also connected up my USB keyboard and mouse into one of the sockets here. And well, I'm a bit stuck. How do you turn this thing on? I don't see an on button or anything. I don't see any pins that you have to jump either. So I'm guessing that you just plug in the power and it just automatically turns on. Apparently we should see a light, there we go. So as you can see, we've got a red light on and uh, yeah, let's get switched over and see if it turns on. All right guys, and here we go. We've got an image on the screen. Welcome to Raspberry Pi desktop. Before you start, press next to get a few things set up. Let's go ahead and do that. So yeah, just set up your language, keyboards. Okay, so just set up an account. And yeah, this has actually got inbuilt Wi-Fi. So let's go ahead and connect to our Wi-Fi. So yeah, we've connected to the Wi-Fi. Luckily, we didn't need to use Gigabyte Ethernet, but the option's there, which is really good. And now it's saying that it needs to do a software update. So fair enough. We'll just press next, let it do its thing. And I'll be back once we're on the Raspberry Pi desktop. All right, guys, so it is finally finished doing its updates. That took forever. As you guys can see, I've plugged in Ethernet here. It just made the update go a little bit quicker. So yeah, that's that. And now we've got high-speed internet. And yeah, it's all pretty much set up. As you can see, here is our desktop here. 
So we're running what they call is PyOS. It's basically a Debian based Linux distro. So yeah, it looks pretty good. We've got this beautiful background here and we've got a start menu up here. So as you can see, we've got some pre-installed stuff here. We've got programming stuff. Oh, do you remember Scratch? Oh, I used to love using that at school. So we've got LibreOffice, which has come pre-installed here. We've got internet. We've got the Chromium web browser, which is very good. Open source Chrome browser. We've got VLC, another open source media player. We've got image viewer. And we've actually got some games that have come pre-installed here. We've got accessories and stuff here. Calculator, all that good stuff. All the stuff you really need, really. So yeah, some could argue it's quite a bloated version of Linux, but it seems all right, honestly. And on something like this, it's perfect. Honestly, it's all you'll ever need. The board is quite warm because of all the updates and stuff it's been on a little while and i'm sure when we put it in our case later then that should help with cooling and heat dissipation and stuff but so far i'm pretty impressed i'm going to go ahead and explore pios a little bit more and then yeah i'll see if we can get minecraft installed and play on our raspberry pi all right guys so to install minecraft on a raspberry pi you've got two options you can either use Minecraft Pi Edition, which comes pre-installed on most Raspberry Pis. For some reason, it hasn't come pre-installed on mine. If I go to games here, as you can see, it's not here. And it's a very old version of Minecraft. It's very similar to like the very first Pocket Edition. It's very basic. You don't want that. So the second option is Minecraft Java, which obviously I play on my channel. So to do that, what you need to do is you need to go to this GitHub here. It's called Pi Apps. Literally just Google Pi Apps and it should be the first one that comes up. And then you just copy and paste this command here into your terminal. So yeah, I've just gone ahead and done that and it's just downloaded. And then you just type pi dash apps and this menu should come up. So yeah, this is like an app installer or an app store for your Raspberry Pi, all open source stuff in here. So if we just scroll down here, we've got lots of different flavors of Minecraft. So we've got Minecraft Bedrock Edition. We can also install Minecraft Java and they've even got LunaCline on Raspberry Pi as well, which is really cool. So many things you can do with a Raspberry Pi. But yeah, let's go ahead and get Minecraft Java Luna. Let's go ahead and install that. And yeah, it basically just does it all for you. You just press install and it installs all the dependencies, all the Java, everything it needs to run. So yeah, we're just going to leave this to do its thing. And then we're going to open up Minecraft Luna Client. Now, spoiler alert, I don't think it's going to run very well. I've heard lots of people online saying it gets about a maximum of 30 FPS, but we'll see. We'll put mine to the test and it might surprise me. You never know. As you can see, we've got Luna Client. That is so cool. So I'm not sure about crack support on the Raspberry Pi. I think you do need to have a Minecraft account in order to play Minecraft. Otherwise, you'll just be stuck with the demo. But this is really cool. Look at that. It's opening just like it would on Windows. So let's go ahead and launch the 1.8.9 here. And then we just need to sign in with our account. And yeah, it'd be good to see Luna Client on my Raspberry Pi. It's already getting quite hot. So, uh, so yeah, we won't run this for too long. We don't want it to overheat. But yeah, let's see how it goes. All right, guys, so Luna Client has installed on the Raspberry Pi and it's very, very slow. So I'm currently just making a single player world here so we can just test it out. And I wouldn't be surprised if it crashes, honestly. It's so slow right now. But is it going to do it? It looks like it is. Here we go. OK, so um, yeah, it's very, very choppy. Let's go ahead and just quickly turn down my settings because there's no way I'm going to be able to play like this. Let's just go into video settings here. Turn all of these down. Turn all of this off. All right, so we're we're just going to go ahead and throw up the FPS mods here because F3 will just take up my entire screen because the scaling's just messed up on the Raspberry Pi for some reason. So let's go ahead and enable FPS here. And as you can see, we're getting about 8 FPS. That is not good at all, is it? All right, so it's a little bit more playable now that we've turned down some settings. Like we can move around a bit more, but I mean, yeah, look at that FPS. I'll just make it bigger for you guys to see. Thing feels really hot, so uh, we probably won't run this for long. It's actually very kind of hot to touch right now. But yeah, 20 FPS is not too bad. All right, let's put our frame rate on unlimited and see how much we get now. So yeah, whether we've got V-Sync on or off, it doesn't make any difference. We're still getting about 20 FPS. So yeah, I don't even want to try and run the latest version of Minecraft on the Raspberry Pi because it's going to really struggle. If we go into full screen here, see if it makes any difference. Uh, we're getting a little bit more FPS, I suppose. But yeah, it's not great, really. It's a cheap credit card size computer. I'd say this probably runs better than on a Chromebook. If you haven't seen my playing Minecraft on a Chromebook, I'll leave it on the top right for you guys to check out. That was pretty interesting. But yeah, I mean, it's not too bad, I suppose. I mean, I don't think PvP will be very doable on here, but we'll give it a go because that's what I like to do in these videos. I wouldn't be surprised if this just crashes my game, honestly. Oh, this is unplayable. 
This is so slow. And we've crashed. <laughs> There's no way we're running Hypixel on here. All right, so I tried a bit off camera to try and get Hypixel running on the Raspberry Pi, but it just wasn't having it. The lobby is just too full on for the Raspberry Pi. So I've actually found a server that we can play on the Raspberry Pi, and it's my man club. Yeah, let's give it a go. Let's see. Let's do some PvP on the Raspberry Pi over here and see how we go. So we're in a 1v1 right now, and we're getting about 25 FPS. The maps are very good for FPS on my man club. If you're ever on a low-end PC and you want to do some warming up or 1v1s or something, definitely check out my man club. Anyway, we're actually uh, doing all right here. I've actually learning how to play with bad fps and it's actually kind of working i mean i if you can get used to it i suppose but it's not great really yep now i'm getting destroyed no <laughs> oh that's just it's just annoying it's so hard to pvp with low fps i mean did you see me i was you know going back and i was rod critting but it's just not enough is it but yeah, I don't really know what else to say, really. This is Minecraft and a Raspberry Pi. Don't go out and buy one of these if you want to play Minecraft PvP. And maybe survival it might be good for. You know, maximum 30 FPS. Probably be fine for that. But if you want to do try hard duels on Mindman Club, I don't think this is the right computer to buy, to be honest with you. But yeah, if you want to see a series of videos on my channel on the Raspberry Pi, I can do all kinds of things, really. One thing that I'm planning to do is host a server off my Raspberry Pi, which you guys can join and you guys can play with me. I can maybe do some competitions and stuff as well. Obviously, the server will have offline support, so you guys with offline accounts can join. Obviously, yeah, anything that involves playing Minecraft on this thing, I don't think we'll be able to do. Although, if you want to see me try and optimize Minecraft on a Raspberry Pi, then definitely let me know in the comments section down below. This guy's just tearing me apart because my FPS is so bad. I can't aim. I can't do anything. Oh, I just I can't even hit. This map is so bad for FPS. The last one was a lot better than this. This is so choppy. This guy's probably getting mad at me because I'm running so much, but I just can't, man. He's just not even trying. He's trying to punch me. I mean, I'll take a win. A win on a Raspberry Pi is good enough for me. Just one win. I don't care if they're trying or not. Yes! We did it. <laughs> we did it. That guy wasn't trying at all, but we won a duel on my main club, which is a pretty try-hard server, on a Raspberry Pi with like 10 FPS. <laughs> so maybe you can do PvP on a Raspberry Pi if you get used to it. Who knows? Anyway, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and let me know in the comments what you want to see me do on the Raspberry Pi. I'm really thankful for all the support on my last video. That really motivated me to go out and buy a Raspberry Pi, because this is going to be a new series on my channel. So let me know what you want to see, and I'll definitely try and make it happen. All right, guys, thank you guys all for watching. Leave a like, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.